In the last section, you saw how transactions impacted the accounting equation. Now we're going to analyze the impact of business transactions on the accounts. Transactions are entered into accounts using double entry accounting. As we talked about earlier, business transactions include two parts, the giving part and the receiving. We record both, both parts of the transaction, which is what we call double entry system. Each transaction, therefore, affects at least two accounts. In accounting, we use the T account to visually represent what an account looks like. So whenever you see these T accounts, that's all the information that's contained in an account. The T account looks like this. On the top, you will get the title of the account. So if this is a cash account, the title will have cash. If it is a common stock account, the title will say common stock. Now there are names for the right side and the left side of your T account. The left side of your T account is called a debit. The right side of your T account is called a credit. The names debit and credit in accounting are just names. Debit again is the left side of your T account and credit is the right side of your T account. Now what goes on the debit and credit side of your T account are explained by this slide. I would like you to take pause this video and copy down this mnemonic. Be sure to copy down the description in blue right down here as well and then bring that to class or if you're an online student and you're doing your homework and doing your practice questions be sure to keep this with you because this will help you understand your debits and credits, the rules of debits and credits. Now also I want to let you know that your book does it a little differently so the PowerPoint slides that you have and the book does it differently. It, you end up with the same result but they go through a different uh, method of doing debits and credits or different method of teaching debits and credits. This is a lot easier, I have found, but you are welcome to use whatever fits your learning style. So the mnemonic for the rules of debit and credit is dead crowl. The way I tell students to remember is crowl is a cross between a crow and an owl. It's two birds, so they're dead birds, dead crowl. Now, the normal balances are on the side shown above which means the normal balance of expenses, assets, and dividends are debit balances. The normal balances of expenses, assets, and dividends are debit on the debit side, and the normal, ba normal balances of revenues, owners, equity, and liabilities are on the credit side of your T-account. An account increases, then it goes to the same side as your normal balances. Let's say that you had an asset that the amount of the asset increased, and we will take a look at an example next, but let's say an asset increases, it will go on the same side as a normal balance. So if an asset increases, you will debit that amount to your T account decreases go on the opposite side. So if an asset decreases, you would put it on the credit side of that asset account. Now we'll go look at an example. Make sure you have your mnemonic and your T account written out in front of you so you can follow along as I go through this example. Now the first thing I'm going to tell you is that the beginning cash balance for this company is $10,000. You know that we show accounts visually using our T accounts, so our cash would all be shown as a T account, and the title of that T account is cash. Now, using your rules of debit and credit, which would be shown on your mnemonic, you should be able to tell me on which side, the debit side or the credit side, would show your beginning cash balance of 10000 the normal balance of cash would be on what side, debit or credit. The way that you would use your mnemonic is to say, first figure out cash, what type of item is it? Cash is an asset account, and on your mnemonic, assets are debits. So the normal balance of cash would be a debit. 
And the way you would show that would be to say balance. This is balance of 10,000. Now remember, this is not a transaction. A transaction would be the only thing that we use double entry bookkeeping. So equal and opposite reactions, two sides, would be for a transaction. This is not a transaction. This is a balance. This is how much cash you have at a given point in time. This is the information that we use to prepare our balance sheet. So don't confuse balances with transactions. Transactions are the only things that we do a double entry for. Now I'm going to give you a transaction next. The transaction is that we provided $5,000 of services for cash. Now this is a transaction. It has a financial impact on the business and it's measurable. Now you've got to figure out how to enter this into an account. First of all, what did we receive? We received $5,000 in cash. Now cash, you know, is an asset. Therefore, our cash increased by 5000 if you look at your mnemonic, it says increases goes on the same side as a normal balance. So for our cash account, we would debit this 5000 We would put it on the debit side, 5000 Now remember, every transaction we have to have an equal and opposite reaction. Kind of like the physics law, right? Both sides have to be equal but opposite because we are impacting our accounting equation as we looked at earlier. So now we have to look at the other side. So we got 5000 What did we give? Services for cash, right? We provided services. Whenever we provide goods and services, we call that revenue. So your other account that was affected by this transaction would be revenue. Now, do we put this on a debit or a credit? Again, go to your rules of debits and credit, look at your mnemonic. Where do you find revenue? Revenues on the credit side. Did our revenue increase or decrease? It increased because we provided $5,000 of services. Therefore, if revenue increased, it would go on your credit side. Let's do one more. I'm going to give you another transaction. This transaction says that we paid $1,000 cash for rent. Now let's see how this transaction affects our accounts. It's a transaction, so it affects at least two accounts. We paid cash, so you know that cash is one of the accounts that are affected. So if cash is the account that's affected, we need to figure out did our cash go up or cash go down? You should have answered cash went down because we paid money out of the business. Your accounting rules say that if we had a reduction in that particular account, it goes on the opposite side of the normal balance. So cash, the normal balance of cash is a debit, but we our balance went down. We had a reduction of cash. Therefore, we would put that on the credit side of our cash account. Cash went down, we would put it on the credit side of our cash account. Now that's only one side of our transaction. Let's look at the other side. What, what did we receive? We received rent. We had rent expense. So we will have a T account for rent expense. From your mnemonic, you will know that your rent expenses are debits. Our rent expense increased. Therefore, we're going to put it on the same side as the normal balance, which should be a debit. Now, as you can see, we had an equal and opposite reaction. We had a 1,000 debit for rent, and we had a 1,000 credit for cash. Therefore, we recorded both sides of the transaction. Now, I want to also teach you how to take a balance. These are the only two transactions that occurred during this period, so I want to teach you how to take a balance of each account. Let's first do cash. To take a balance for the cash account, or any account for that matter, you draw a line at the bottom, just like that, and then you take 
a total of the two sides. So you would add up your debit side, which would equal 15,000. You would add up your credit side here, that would be 1,000. And then to take a balance, you subtract the smaller number from the larger number and put it on the side of the larger number. So th the smaller number would be 1,000. You subtract it from the larger number, which would be 15,000, which gives you $14,000. And where do you put that? You put that on the side of the larger number. So you would put balance 14,000. That's how you would take a balance of an account. Now let's take the balances of revenues and the rent expense account. That's easy because there's nothing on the debit side of revenues, so your balance for your revenue account would simply be $5,000 balance. Same thing for your rent expense. There's nothing on the credit side, so your balance would be $1,000 debit. Be sure to understand the rules of debit and credit. I will do another example in the next section and um, we will do lots of practice in class. If you're an online student, be sure to take up, uh, look up some questions in your study plan and get lots of practices for your debits and credits.